Lamborghini Murcielago headlights. Sticker price of $23,000. My car came with part of one of them. It's worth about $5,000. Barely enough money to buy me a car to get to work. So let's build our own. So my car came with a bit of a headlight left. It just had a cracked lens on it. So I went ahead and took all that glass off of the lens and that left me with a really nice leftover body of the headlight. So I took the bulb bezels out of it just to leave the black plastic and covered it in dots that you use for scanning and I'm gonna go ahead and 3D scan it. After a few tries I got a pretty good version of a scan of the headlight but given that it has the glass bulbs in there and that reflects back on the scanner it is a really hard object to scan. Threw that into 3D Studio Max and I started designing a replacement for the stock headlight shape. So I went through the process of modeling out the stock headlight shape and I wanted to do this in two parts. So the first part is the upper that kind of covers the bulbs and it has a slot for the blinker integrated into it as well. And after a night of 3D printing, I have a pretty good piece here. It matches up with the size and the scale of the actual headlight itself and it starts to look the part. So I went ahead and measured out how large the bulbs were so I could order my own replacement bulbs. I wasn't able to find an exact same size replica for the small and large bulb, but I was able to find some projectors that were pretty close and DOT approved. Now that my bulbs arrived, I'm gonna do this little trick where I take a picture of the back of it as square as I possibly can, import that picture into 3D software, and build a bracket out of plastic that will fit the bolt holes for the original light. The idea is I need to be able to 3D print an attachment point so these bulbs can attach into whatever plastic housing I make. And then I was rudely interrupted by a phone call saying that my boat had sank. This part of the project was all the way back in January of this year. These headlights have been a bit of a pet project of mine that I've been working on on and off for quite a long time. And everything kind of went awry when I found out my boat had sunk. So I had to drop the project and focus on the boat. But recently, Creality reached out to me with their Raptor X 3D scanner, wanted me to test out their 3D scanner. And I thought that was a great opportunity and a tool to use to jumpstart this project once again. So right out the box, the Raptor X is pretty impressive with its awesome carrying case. Now this is a blue laser scanner and the stats are pretty impressive. It's got 34 blue laser lines which allows it to scan really really small objects up to really really large objects up to like 4,000 millimeters with super high accuracy and you can scan wirelessly which is a huge huge benefit so I figured I'd give it a test first on what I'm calling the bulb bezels these are these aluminum parts and they need to be scanned at really really high accuracy and they're a very very hard thing to scan but the cool thing is, is that they are very symmetrical so if I can get even half of it with a good scan I can create the rest really easily in software and for something this small and also aluminum that I couldn't put trackers on these were a little bit difficult the large one was easier than the small one but I was able to get good scans of not only the headlight rings but also the different bulbs so I could emulate putting the bulbs into the headlights in 3d software and then I decided just for fun why not take the entire headlight housing that I already had tracking dots on and stuff like that and see if I could get a good scan and that's where the Raptor X really really shine and I was so impressed I got an ultra ultra high accuracy perfect scan of this headlight on my like first try it was unbelievable and it didn't stutter around the glass bulbs like other scanners had before it captured everything so you can see the side by side here of my old scan and my new scan that i got with the raptor x and it is so so much better what i was able to capture with the raptor x so it's a great product huge thanks to creality for sending that out for me there's going to be a link in the description product link if you're in the market for a really really good 3d scanner that is where you're going to find it and now that i've got a scan of my car and i got a good scan of my headlight I'm off to the races. The first piece that I wanna model out is a lens. It's really easy to print. I can 3D print a template or a fake one and make sure it fits in the car, make sure it lines up with all the edges on the car and we're starting off with the right base shape. So I did that, I tested it out on the car. That shape was all good. And the next thing I wanted to go after was the headlight bezels. Those parts that were aluminum, they need to be printed a different way. They can't be 3D printed out of extrusion style plastic because they need to be able to stand really, really, really high temperatures that those bulbs may reach. So this is a resin printing operation. So I took my 3D scans that I had made and created my headlight bezels in 3D Studio Max. And then Elgu had sent me this Mars 5 Ultra resin printer. Now this is my first resin printer. My last time I tried to do this, it did not work out well. So I was a little bit hesitant. I was a little bit worried. There's only about five days left in the build. So I had to nail this. But this ABS-like resin has really, really high temperature resistance. So if I can get a good print out of these, it's going to be able to last inside the headlight body. And I'm super happy to say that the Mars 5 Ultra gave me no problems right out of the box. I was able to create these really, really good prints, ultra high definition, 
It's got a large enough print bed that I can print the small rings and the large rings, and they look really, really good. Now my first one, I made a problem in the modeling process where I made some of these walls so thin that you could literally see through the plastic. So as I was taking the supports off, some of the walls broke. But that wall was way too thin to be used in production. So I was able to really easily go back into the software and print another one. It was only about six hours per print. So I cranked out four of those, two large ones, two small ones with a thicker wall and it worked out great. So now that I've got my headlight bezels done and I've got my headlight lens shape done, I know I can start extruding down from that headlight lens and build down into the car space to build out my headlight. On my headlight, I changed the shape a little bit. I made it a little bit longer. And in the long run, I plan on having this vent that runs down and feeds the brake duct. So it's a little bit skinnier on the top left side than it would be with the stock headlight. For the styling cues on this, I really just followed what Lamborghini had already done on the Murcielago. I didn't wanna try and make something that looked completely different. I actually wanted to try and see how close I could get to the real deal while changing the shape. Another thing that I did is I wanted to have LED lighting in integrated into this light so I could light up the lens and have the lens have some glow effect to it. So I put a notch in there right underneath where the lens is gonna mount but it's still gonna be covered up and that holds about four dots of LED strip that is part of our addressable LED display. So it only took a few days of printing and I was able to have these headlight bodies and the tubes and the light tubes and the light housings and everything all 3D printed out of ASA. And from there, it's time to assemble. Now at this point in the build, I've got one day to focus on headlight stuff and I gotta try and nail it all in this one day or I'm gonna fall behind schedule on being able to do other things. So there's a lot of standing in front of this table right here and not doing anything other than building these two headlights. So it started with building what I call kind of the bulb tubes. We put the bulb and the light housing inside its tube, make sure everything's centered, make sure the bezel is gonna fit right on the centered piece, make sure the light bulb is at the right height compared to the bezel. And then I create these tubes. There was a little bit of overhang in different pieces on purpose, so I had room and margin for error for centering. And then everything gets plastic welded together and glued together very well with the Gorilla Glue. And then the parts of the bulb tubes that are gonna be seen have to get a little bit of body filler on them to make sure it's a nice smooth surface that people are seeing. Now the original light had a texture to it and I wanted to match that texture the best I could. The way I found to do that was with Rust-Oleum's truck bed liner that has a spray and a grit, but the paint comes out and it's too glossy of a black. So then I hit it with steel it on top of that and it created a very, very close to stock texture in the long run. So with the tubes all body worked up and drying, it's time to plastic weld and glue the lights. And this is where I ran into my first big issue is being on a time crunch, I used glue and then I put body filler over that glue. When I go to sand the body filler, the glue doesn't sand off because it's just not fully dry. It's not rock solid and it's not sanding off like body filler would. And I wanted to leave a high spot basically where the glue wouldn't go away but the body filler would go away. So that was a nightmare to fight by hand for many, many hours. The longest part of this process by far was just sanding everything smooth. Get a little bit of body filler on there and then it's really tight crevices, really small areas, can't use a lot of power sanders and I had to just sand. And I think the first headlight took six or seven hours of sanding and the second one went a little bit faster after I had learned on the first headlight but it was a lot. One saving grace is the tubes fill up a lot of space and the tubes were easy to sand quickly. And you start to see the shape of the headlight body here and where the tubes slot into the headlight. So the actual finished surface that I had to sand to be really, really perfect wasn't as large as it could have been, but it was the most standing and sanding I had ever done in one day by a long shot.
After the sanding's done, I'm able to mock up the tube placement and everything is looking good. So it's time to glue the tubes into place, into their proper place where they're gonna go permanently and connect that bridge piece that connects the two tubes to the back of the light. Basically just gluing all the large objects into place so they're never gonna be able to move ever again. Once everything's glued and body worked, it's time to go ahead and hit it with the paint. I was a bit out on a limb when I tried to steal it over the truck bed liner paint because I had no idea if it was gonna work. And also, I'm at 3 a.m. at this point and have less than 24 hours to have this car finished. So any mistakes here that mean I gotta sand the entire headlight would be catastrophic. Now that the paint is drying up and I really like the finish on it, it's time to start focusing on the lenses. Now these lights have a slight bend to them side to side and a slight bend to them front to back, but it's not a huge one. so. I tested out putting a sheet of glass on the lens itself, or the light itself, and it didn't really need for me to heat and bend and change the shape of the plastic. The plastic would just do it on its own. So I started by tracing the light, tracing my borders and my edges so I knew where everything could go, and especially where my rivet holes could go so I could rivet the glass onto the body of the light. Once I had my two pieces of glass, it was time to build kind of the eyelid into the glass. So originally these, these were gonna be parts of that were made out of plastic, but real estate is really, really thin in that area. And I found that it was gonna be so much easier to just paint the eyelid onto the inside of the plastic to emulate that cover piece that you would see in the normal Murcielago headlight. So I used some gloss black spray paint with some really, really good vinyl edge tape so it would not bleed. I drew that shape out, painted it gloss black, and I was able to rivet the glass onto the headlight housing. Worth mentioning at this point, we've fallen into day two. So I'm now taking up way too much time to build these headlights, but obviously, it's gotta get done. So I'm shaping up the lens to be the exact perfect size for the housing by leaving the rivets in place but not riveting it down yet because if I sand the edges of this and get sand inside the headlight, I'll never be able to get it back out. So leave the rivets in there to hold everything in the proper place while I sand all the way around the edges for an exact perfect snug fit for the lens on the headlight housing, the headlight body. Next, it was time to shift gears into figuring out how I'm gonna mount these headlights into the car. I'm really happy to say that my model was so close to the original headlight housing that I was able to use the mounts on the driver's side that existed already for the headlight. But since we rebuilt the entire passenger side, I had to rebuild custom mounts. But they're pretty simple, they're pretty straightforward. So I welded in some adjustable brackets, and damn, these headlights look really good with an open body without a lens. I was very, very happy with how they turned out so far how they're fitting in the car, and they look super, super mean. But I had always planned on putting a lens on these, so I had to go ahead and make sure I still did that anyways. But it was my first time seeing the light on the car and knowing that this project was gonna be successful and it was gonna look good, which was really motivating. So in the plastic 3D modeling world, a lot of people need to attach plastic pieces to plastic pieces, and they use these things called nut certs. So I had some N6 nut certs, and you heat them up with a soldering iron and press them into the plastic where they need to be, and it basically creates a spot that a bolt can go into your part. They're not bulletproof strong, but they are pretty damn strong. Since my light holds itself and the weight of it and everything is held in place just because it sits on the mounts, these bolts are basically to keep it from shifting left to right too much. So I'm hoping these will be able to hold up. So I got my nut certs in the bottom of both headlights so they could be bolted into the car. And now we're onto the final stretch of just needing to put the border around the lenses so you won't see the headlight housing area where it is riveted onto the headlight housing. I first started by using a matte black vinyl wrap and I actually really just did not like the look of that. So I decided I wanted to do a gloss black vinyl wrap instead. Final's pretty solid for anything that's going on in the front of your car because it is really good against rock chips. Painting the external side of the glass would have been a nightmare. So keep in mind the paint is on the internal side of the glass for the eyelid, vinyl wrap is on the external side of the glass for the border, and it makes for a pretty good combo that's gonna be able to survive being on the road. And 
And with those two lens pieces being done, it's finally time to rivet them onto the light body. Really happy that none of the rivets had any failures. The plastic was able to have enough body to it and enough grip to it that the rivets could go into it, but they didn't break the plastic and they didn't cause any failures. And I was able to rivet both of the lights down perfectly good and the lenses and everything were connected. From there, I wanted to do a lot of weather sealing. So I used windshield urethane adhesive all the way around the outside border of the light to make sure that it would be sealed in really well from the outside elements. All right, they have not had their final leveling, but the headlights are wired, they are on, they look absolutely amazing. Like this was such a cool project. I just really wanted to be able to show you guys how much we could do now with the 3D printing, resin printing, FDM printing and all this stuff. I mean, this is such a cool, cool combo of things that we put together. $23,000 for a set of headlights and we built headlights that look in place for this car. They look right, they look period correct and they're absolutely amazing. I'm gonna touch up a little bit of these uh, edges that have a little bit of light bleed through. I'll go ahead and get some black on those and uh, then I'm gonna get these uh, set, level set in the car the right way because they're just basically resting on their mounts right now. But these are unbelievable. We got low beams, we got high beams. I went ahead and put the blinkers in there. Um, this is freaking killer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We really, really appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. I hope this was helpful to anybody out there that wants to start fabricating crazy plastic stuff on their own. Or if you have a car where the headlights cost $12,000 a piece. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one, which will drop in just a few days. And remember, if you are at SEMA, catch us at the Airlift Performance booth Thursday, 1 p.m., we have a guest signing. I'm the guest, I think. Or you're the guest, and I'm doing the signing. Anyways, see you there. Peace! <laughs>